So this is the third video I'm making and in this video I'm going to show you how to do quantitative interpretation of the VES data. I've introduced it to the materials you need and the curve types that you have. So the data I plotted, I'm going to show you the data, maybe I will send it to you, but I have already plotted it on the log log graph. And this is the plot, you can see the way the curve is. So if you compare this to the previous plot I showed you earlier, you see that this is like A ascending, then it's coming down like K. So like A K curve. That's why I named it an A K curve. So we're expecting to see how many layers, four layers, because we have two combination of two different curves. All right. So the first thing we do, this is the curve. So we move it from the tracing paper. This is the curve. Of course, on our y-axis, we have our period activity, and on the x-axis, we have AB over 2. So the first thing I do is to try to use the ascending master curve first to get the k values. The k values, that what I need to get first from the ascending master curve. So I look for the ascending master curve. This is the ascending master curve. So I place my, uh, my piece of paper on the ascending master curve. And I move the curve until it fits in into any of these curves here. So I place it here. So it fits into k equals to 4. These are the k's. And this is k equals to 4 here. And I'm pointing at. So I, I'm going to mark the origin. I'll say k1 equals to 4. Okay. After doing that, I'm going to go and curve match k equals to 4 to the auxiliary curve. Since this is an A, an a k curve, I'm going to use an A auxiliary curve. Let me get that. An A auxiliary curve. This is an A auxiliary curve. This is A. You can see this is HK. So this is my A. Okay, so I'm going to place this at the origin. I'm going to place the points at the origin. I'm going to trace out four. So I'm tracing that out now. So this is I'm curve matching this k equals to four. I've curve matched that part of the curve. You can see that I use a dotted line. Or dotted lines to curve match that okay so you can see that there's still a part of the curve that is still going up that is still ascending so i still need to try to get the k value and also curve match this curve using the auxiliary curve so i go back to my word ascending curve master curve to get the k value again so this time around i'm going to be moving the dotted lines that's the model curve this dotted line I'm going to be moving it through the origin on the ascending master curve until this curve fits into any of the curves on the master curve. So I'm going to do that. Make sure that your wire axis on your transparent paper is parallel to the wire axis on the master curve. So I'm, I'll keep moving through it until it fits into any of that curve. Okay, I have one. I think I have one. K equals to nine. It fits into this curve, which is k equals to nine. So I mark that point out. This is k two equals to nine. Okay. So I go back to my to my auxiliary curve, my a auxiliary curve, and I put that point on the axis on the origin. Then I call match. This is nine. And I call match nine. Okay, so this is nine from the origin you could match that this nine so I've called match nine this is nine this is my nine all right now you can see that I've called match this part of the curve the next part is what descending is that also so instead of using an ascending master curve I'm going to use a descending master curve and this is the same thing as that one here. I will produce it to you earlier. So I'm going to place 
I'm going to move the dotted line, the new dotted line to the origin until the descending curve fits into any of these curves here. Okay, I'm going to do that. Make sure that your y axis or your transmission profile is parallel to the y axis on the curve. Okay. Okay, I think it fits well. Into, you have to be very careful until it fits properly into one another. I think the best one it fits in into here is k equals to 1 over 9. k equals to 1 over 9. So I want to mark that point. I say k3 equals to what? 1 over 9. So I'm going to go to this time around, auxiliary curve, but I'm going to use a K auxiliary curve. I see this is a K Q. Okay, auxiliary curve. So I'm going to place it here at the origin. At the origin, I look at 1 over 9. This is 1 over 9. This is 1 over 9. Okay. okay. So I'm going to mark that out. I'm going to mark that out. So, so I'm going to mark it. 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 I'll cut match that. So you can see I have three keys. Three keys. Oh, so if I have three keys, I said earlier, I'm going to have four layers. If I have two keys, I will have three layers. That is what it is. We have four keys, we have five layers. That's what it is. So we have the case, but we need to get the restivity of each of these layers and the thickness. So we we'll go ahead to do that. So the next thing to do is to get the restivity and the thickness. So we are going to have um, one that restivity of the first layer. The way it is is that the restivity of the first layer usually got in from the log log graph. The reason is that we assume that the apparent restivity for the first layer is equal to the true restivity for the first layer because we assume that the first layer is isotropic and uh, it is homogeneous. And the current has not yet been attenuated. Um, that much. So we assume that the apparent restivity for the first layer is equal to the true restivity. So I'm going to get the restivity on the first layer from the log log graph. Remember, I plotted apparent restivity on the y axis. So I'm going to do that now to get the restivity on the first layer. So that first point, the first point, the first point where the, the first k, I'm going to trace it to the y axis. This is, this is 100. So this is like 50. This is 60. This is 65. So this is around 68. So my row 1 is equal to 68. 68. Uh, so the, the, the remaining restivities I'm going to get, they are going to be apparent restivities. I'm going to call them row 2R and row 3R. So I'm going to get that from the graph for the apparent restivities. Remember, I did not say row 1R. I'm going to say row 2R and row 3R. So I'm going to have row 2R. So row 2R will also be gotten from the log log graph. I will trace this to the y-axis. This is 100. This is 200. This is 110, 120, 130, 140, 140, 1 meter. My row 3R. I'm going to trace this to the y axis. This is 1000. This is my 9, 9, 980. 980 ohm meter. I'm going to get my H1 values too. That's the thickness H1, H2R, and H3R. My H1 is going to be the thickness of the first layer. That one, I'll trace it to the x axis to get that. This is 1, and this is uh, 7. So I'm having around 0 0.75 for the thickness of the first layer. 
Sorry, so I, this I will get from the log log graph. So this is around 0 0.7, 0 0.75. So this will be H2R, remember, they are all there. We are not, not getting the true thickness yet. So H2R for the second layer. So I'm going to trace this one down to the y axis to the x axis sorry x axis this is two this is like 2.5 2 2.2 2.1 2.2 2.3 2.3 meters then my h3 r i'll trace this down this is 10 this is my this is 10 20 30 40 this is around 50 so this is 50 meters. So I've got my my rows and my k and my h. But the only one that is true here is row one and h one. These are the true rows. So I have to get my row two, my row three, and my row four. These are the true activities of the second layer, the third layer, and the fourth layer respectively. How do I do that? There's a formula we use for row two. It's going to be k one. Row one, row three is goes to K two, row two R. You see that formula? Then row four. No, we are going to have four layers because we have three keys. K three, row three R. So K one, remember is four. It's going to be four times my row one is sixty eight. This is K two be nine. Row two R is one forty. Then K3 is 1 over 9. Then row 3R is 980. So I'll get that. These are the true activities. Let me try to get that from the calculator now. So 4 times 68. This is 272 ohm meter. And 9 times 140 is 1260 ohm meter. Then the last one 980 divided by 9. That will be 108.890 meters. So this are the true restivity of the second layer, okay, the third layer and the fourth layer respectively. Why this is the true restivity of the first layer? And this is the thickness. So we still need to get the thickness of the second and the third layer. I have to tell you that you cannot get the thickness of the fourth layer because that is where the current terminates. So we can only get the thickness of the first, the second, and the third. So if you have three layers, you can only get the thickness of the first and the second. That is the way it goes. So the, the layer that the current terminates, you cannot get the thickness of that layer. So to get the thick to get the thickness of these layers, we have to go back to our auxiliary code. We have to go back to our auxiliary curve now to do that. So we go to our auxiliary curve. We can use, uh, let's use our, let's use our A auxiliary curve. Use our HA auxiliary curve to get the thickness. Say these values inside the boxes, eh? It is actually the ratio. It's a two-layer case ratio. So the ratio of the thickness of the second layer upon the first layer. That is what you are seeing here. That's box. The values inside the box is a ratio of thicknesses of the first layer, second layer upon the first layer. So how do we get the ratio now? What we we'll do is this: we put, we put. Uh, Put the first point on the origin. The first point on the origin. Okay. Then we trace the second point down to the y-axis. We trace it down. So we trace it down. This is two. This is three. This is two and three. In between two and three, we can have two point five. So we have H2 upon H1 is equal to 2.5. You are not going to put it that because it's a ratio. To get the ratio, 
thickness ratio between the second and the third layer, we are going to put K2 at the origin. And we will trace K3 down. We we'll trace K3 down. So we we'll trace this down to the X axis or to the box. So this is around 24. This is around 24. Around 23.9. So it's going to be H3 upon H2R. Remember, we don't have H2, this H2R we have. It's going to be 23.9. Well, we have it. So let's get the this now. So we know H1. H1 is 0 0.75, right? Okay. So it's going to be H2 over 0 0.75 equals to 2.5. Okay. So our H2 is equal to be 2.5 times 0 0.75. Come here and multiply that. Two point five times zero point seven five. That will be one point eight seven five meters. Okay, we have let's get this this guy. That will be H three over H two R is what two point three. So it will be two point three equals to twenty three point nine. We cross multiply. This will be 23.9 times 2.3. So if I do that, 23.9 times 2. times 2.3, we have 54.97 meters. So this is our H. So that's what we do. We have gotten the resistivity of the first layer, second layer, third layer, and fourth layer. We have gotten the thickness of the first layer, the second layer, and the third layer. But we cannot get the thickness of the fourth layer, so that is where the current terminates. So, this is the model we work with. We can work with the resistivity of the layer, the thickness of the layer. We can also work with depth too. But when we have the thicknesses, we can get the depth. So, we always work with resistivity, resistivity, which is rho, and thickness of each of the layers that we can get this from. So these values of resistivity is now they can we can infer the topology from it. Okay. This data was gotten was acquired in a basement complex environment. And uh, I'm going to tell you at a later time how we can infer the topology from these values. But this is the way you carry out quantitative interpretation from DES data using the Master calls and the Zilari calls. Okay, so I will, maybe I will send you a table that shows how you can link resistivity values to ethology in a basement complex environment or and in a sedimentary uh, environment so that you know how to do that. So this is how we can go or how much we can do. Thank you very much.